Hello, uh, my name is AJ Santos. I'm a assistant professor at uh, Ankara University. And today I will be talking about a bill that has been proposed in Texas that requires uh, the receiver of cryptocurrency to identify the person that is sending cryptocurrency. The bill has, was introduced a few months ago, and another aspect of the bill, in addition to requiring identification of the sender, is that uh, the uh, Texas Department of Banking is uh, required to promote a specific type of cryptocurrency called uh, verified identity currency which is currency that allows the sender or end receiver to be identified, which is kind of weird because cryptocurrency doesn't really work that way. And how would it be done practically uh, on a public blockchain like Bitcoin? Are you going to put personal identifiable information, name, address, birth certificate, uh, 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 phone numbers, addresses on, on a public blockchain? Uh, or is it something that... Uh, people that are uh, receiving cryptocurrencies need to uh, uh, maintain a database as a secondary off-chain uh, 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 store of information. Then that goes into data protection issues. And uh, you see in the news every day of companies getting hacked and information being leaked. So that's, that's a big danger. Now, the bill is, is very... Uh, uh, undeveloped, and it's, it raises more questions than it helps answer in terms of regulating uh, cryptocurrency in Texas. And uh, the current status of this bill, uh, it was proposed a few months ago, and it's currently pending before committee, uh, which means that this bill hasn't really been debated uh, it hasn't been uh, uh, draft. It, it hasn't been edited and, and changed and, and, and available for public comment. Uh, it's just a congressman. I mean, a, a legislature from Texas uh, was concerned about privacy coins and decided to make a bill that requires uh, the sender to be identified. Uh, Texas is one of the states that is a part-time legis legislature. Uh, meaning that it operates every two years. So this bill did not make, make it to the next step, uh, this particular session. So it might just be dead before even being considered, or it might be picked up uh, in 2021 in the next session. Now, uh, today I will uh, point to specific problems with this bill. Uh, for one, I don't think it really applies to cryptocurrencies. The, the language that is used to describe what is currency uh, is, is not very detailed. And, uh, and if you uh, consider the definition of currency within the context of Texas law, then Bitcoin, Monero, and other cryptocurrencies doesn't fit the definition. So the way the bill currently is drafted would only apply to stable coins, such as Tether and uh, Coinbase USDC. So today, uh, I want to talk about three points. First, I want to touch on some preliminary issues. And I, I'm not going to get into the weeds. I just want to point out some, some, some key uh, problems and issues that are, that are raised by this uh, bill. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to consider the definition of currency. What is currency? What is money uh, in the context of Texas law? And uh, we'll look at some cases uh, that have uh, examined the, the, the question, is Bitcoin money? Can it be considered currency? And finally, I just want to touch on some potential issues. If this bill does become a law, uh, what uh, problems could, be, could arise from this bill uh, uh, being considered uh, a, a law? All right, so first... There is a lot of misinformation out there about cryptocurrency. 
You know, the, the new technology that is a danger to national security, uh, a danger to the uh, status of the US dollar as a reserve, and politicians and the, the media tend to hype up the danger that cryptocurrency serves to the current traditional banking system. Uh, one of the classic uh, arguments that are advanced by, by these uh, uh, politicians and bureaucrats is that cryptocurrency can be used by terrorists or uh, offshoring and, and uh, hiding funds in order to, for, to, to engage in tax avoidance uh, or to finance terrorist uh, organizations. Now, if you really take a big picture look at is cryptocurrency a danger, uh, chances are that you're more likely to die from a heart attack, cancer, or diabetes than a terrorist attack. A terrorist attack, as you can see, uh, ranks you have less than a 0.06% uh, uh, chance of dying from a terrorist attack. So is a danger really there that, that requires you know, state uh, law enforcement to, to regulate and to, to protect the public from you know, this dangerous cryptocurrency? Now, I think if, oh, another argument that some bureaucrats put forward is that if Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh, become the, the new medium of exchange, it poses a systemic threat to the US dollar. The United States dollar is used in oil contracts, uh, in uh, uh, international trade. A lot of the trade between countries are uh, based on the US dollar. And about uh, 61, 62% of bank reserves are in the US dollar and about 21% uh, is in euros. So if we want to think, well, what actually poses a threat to the national security of the United States as, as a dominant uh, force in the world uh, and using the US dollar as a soft power uh, to assert its influence in international politics. Now, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is a new and evolving technology uh, it's, it's just barely scratching the surface of, of mainstream. But if you look at the, the euro, the euro actually has a stated policy of displacing the US dollar as a dominant uh, 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 currency reserve. They're actually planning and, 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 and they have a strategy to increase the influence of the European Union in international relations by encouraging member states to uh, base their, their trade and oil in euro. So if we're looking at you know, currencies that actually pose a threat to the national status of the US dollar, uh, I would argue the euro is probably more of a danger than Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency uh, uh, at, the, at the moment. Now, one issue that this bill raises is well, what is the definition of currency? What is money? And when we consider the definition of money in, in, in the legal sense, one way that we define money from, from a legal perspective is just to open the Oxford Dictionary. You know, you just look up the word and what's the ordinary meaning of that word. And when you do that, it's normally defined as a medium of exchange, right? Uh, as as, as a, a, uh, a utility for conducting trade from, from one product to another product or, or exchanging value for another uh, value. And if you look at the Oxford Dictionary, if you look at Blaw, uh, Black Law's Dictionary, uh, it, it gives a very broad definition of what currency can be uh, defined. So. Courts, when trying to interpret uh, ambiguous terms in, in, in laws, that's the first thing that they look at. What is the ordinary plain meaning of this word? 
Now, when we look at these sources, it's, it's ambiguous, it's unclear. Uh, it, and you look at some definitions, it defines currency is money. Well, what is money? Money is currency. It's self-defining. So another source that courts will use to try to interpret the intent of the legislature is to look at other laws that are similar or related to the law that is being proposed. So here the bill is proposing regulating uh, uh, cryptocurrency as a form of trade. So if we look at other laws that are currently in the books in Texas, we can look at the Texas Money Services Act, which gives an exact definition of what is currency. So it defines currency as coin and paper money of the United States or any country that is designated as legal tender. Now, does Bitcoin fit that definition? Is it considered legal tender? Is it you know, the official currency of, of a state? No, it's not. Now, within the Money Services Act, uh, it also provides an, an additional definition of money or monetary value. And it defines currency. Uh, it, it defines money as currency. You know, you get that inner uh, definition, money is currency, currency is money type, type deal here. But uh, in defining money and monetary value, it means currency or a claim that can be converted into currency, which is by the paragraph above, considered legal tender of a specific country. Now, Another source that's, that courts will look at in interpreting ambiguous terms and, and bills would be guidance uh, that, that are issued by agencies that are interpreting the law. And just recently, April 2019, the Texas Department of Banking issued some guidance on whether uh, cryptocurrencies are subject to money transmitter laws. And in their analysis of the uh, bank, uh, the, the money transfer, uh, money transmitter laws, uh, they come to the conclusion that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies does not fit the definition of money as it is defined in Texas law. Uh, and for two reasons why it wouldn't be considered money. Uh, one, it does not establish a claim or duty uh, or obligation to meet the value of that one Bitcoin that you get. There's no guarantee that Bitcoin will be valued $10,000, $9,000. Uh, it is subject to, to, to the will of the market. And no one is guaranteeing you the, that, that token or that, that, that coin that you have will maintain a certain value. Now, the second reason why that it wouldn't fit the definition of, of money according to Texas law is that there's no central authority. No one controls Bitcoin. And once it's out, the code is out, once uh, uh, you know, miners are, are, are mining the, 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 the cryptocurrency um, uh, code, you know, there's no way to stop the production of, of Bitcoin, it's a, it's a decentralized global operation. So the Texas uh, Department of Banking uh, then uh, concluded that given these characteristics of cryptocurrencies, that it wouldn't fit in the traditional meaning of money as defined under Texas law. So there, therefore, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies in Texas uh, do not are not subject to money transmitter laws. Now, there is a distinction made uh, in the guidance with stable coins. Stable coins are centrally administered. There is an organization that you can point to and say that this organization is co controlling the supply uh, in order to maintain the value. And to a certain extent, it creates a promise. It creates an obligation that one tether or one Coinbase UDC is, is, the, is worth one dollar. So therefore, uh, the, uh, the stable coins in Texas would be subject to tra money transmitter laws. 
and in that sense, this bill that is currently pending uh, in the Texas legislature would apply to those specific types of cryptocurrencies. And it wouldn't apply to decentralized uh, coins such as Monero or, uh, or, or Bitcoin. So the, law, the, the, the lawmaker uh, probably rushed this bill, uh, was a reactionary uh, 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 action because of the news and people talking about Bitcoin uh, that uh, you know, well, the bill was proposed be before uh, Facebook uh, announced uh, the, uh, their own currency. So once it's in the media, once the danger is, is hyped, that's when lawmakers act. And when they act, they don't really, uh, sometimes they don't really consider the, the impact of what is being proposed. So another source that we can look at in defining what Bitcoin and specifically cryptocurrencies uh, can be defined as is by looking at other cases at, at, in other jurisdictions that have considered the definition of is Bitcoin money. Uh, one case from 2014 uh, in the uh, United States versus Fadila. Uh, this case involved a Silk Road uh, dark web uh, market administrator, uh, and he was charged with operating an unlicensed money transmitting uh, business. And the way that court defined the whether Bitcoin is considered money is by referring to a dictionary. And in referring to a dictionary, uh, it, it established that something generally accepted as as medium of exchange, a measure of a value or a means of payment. So it's a very, very broad definition of what money is. So in that case, by just referring to the dictionary definition of what is considered money, that case found that Bitcoin was considered uh, money and they're uh, subject to the federal uh, money transmitting uh, laws. In 2016, in another case, this involved an exchange with uh, Coinmex. Bitcoin uh, uh, was uh, also charged with an unlicensed money transmitting uh, business. And it also found that Bitcoin is a, uh, mon something of monetary value. And it also can be considered a payment instrument. So in defining uh, whether Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies fit the definition of, of, of money or monetary value, at the federal level, it would meet that definition. Uh, in another case, just recent, uh, in, in Espinoza, this involved someone that was involved in P2P, person-to-person -person exchange of Bitcoin, uh, using uh, localbitcoins.com. But the problem with, with this particular user, it wasn't a one-off exchange. He was conducting trades on a regular basis, meeting people at Starbucks, and exchanging Bitcoin for money. So then the question became, is someone who engages in the trade of Bitcoin for business purposes considered a money transmitter? And according to Florida law, they are. And the reason why is because the state law on money transmitters is actually very broad and it includes whether or not redeemable in currency. So in Florida, because of the specific wording of the local uh, Florida law on money transmitters, uh, it is uh, considered a crime to not be registered as a money transmitter if you're engaging in trading uh, Bitcoin as part of a business. Now, how would Texas define electronic form of currency? So it would look at the ordinary meaning, as I mentioned earlier. And as we uh, noted, that uh, the definition of currency as it is defined under the Texas legal framework, uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies do not fit as uh, it is defined in that specific legal system. Now, this Espinoza case that I just mentioned in Florida is a non-binding authority because the United States is a federal system. Just because one court in one jurisdiction holds 
a specific uh, uh, finding, that finding does not automatically apply to other jurisdictions, especially, especially since Espinoza was interpreting Florida law. And Florida law specifically was broad enough to uh, uh, include cryptocurrencies as defining, uh, defining cryptocurrencies as money. So uh, where are we in, in uh, defining uh, uh, the, the impact of the bill? Well, I think the bill will probably be dead and it's not gonna go into the next step or if it is picked up, chances are that it will be uh, amended and it probably would include the definitions as defined by FinCEN. Uh, FinCEN recently published uh, some guidance on defining convertible virtual assets. So if the Texas legislature really wants to uh, regulate the, the use of, of cryptocurrencies, specifically private cri cryptocurrencies, they should in, uh, incorporate the definition as defined by FinCEN uh, in order to uh, avoid any uh, confusion whether uh, cryptocurrencies can be considered a form of money under the Texas law. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, you have a question? Sorry, I have a question. Yes. From Texas, yes. I know that don't have Okay, yes. Well, you know, I did look up the the, uh, leg the legislature that proposed it, and you can go. There's a website. Uh, I've got the, the the domain name, but you can see everyone that donates to that particular politician. And I looked looked up his background. He's actually an accountant, and most of his donations come from the finance sector. So I suspect maybe there was there was some backroom lobbying. There's no proof of that. Uh, but that's my suspicion, that the traditional banking system uh, basically are encouraging lawmakers to, to over-regulate uh, this sector because perhaps they view it as, as a form of competition. Right. Yes. Right. Um, and it deals with the essentially what was effectively 500,000 Bitcoin liability that was created by Ben Marcellus in the uh, late 2011 House Club. Right. Uh, I'm not familiar with that particular case. Uh, but can you, can you elaborate a little bit more of, of what that court. Uh, what occurred is Brendan Shavers mm -hmm. proceeded to um, offer. Yes, so there's a distinction that is made between the state level and the federal level. So at the state level in Texas, you might not be considered a money transmitter under local Texas law. But the federal law on, tax, uh, on, on, uh, on uh, money transmitter is a lot broader. So even if you're not considered a money transmitter in the state that you're in, you still can run afoul uh, on the federal level and be charged with uh, operating an unlicensed uh, uh, business as a money transmitter. So I, that, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably what happened in that particular case. But my understanding was federal Right. Right. So, so yes, so there is a law for money transmitters at the federal level, and there's law for money transmitters at the state level. Right. So the law. So the law that, that, that applies in Texas. You could you could say that I'm a money transmitter only in Texas. I'm not conducting business outside of Texas. Uh, but because of the cumulative effect of uh, intercommerce tra uh, trade, uh, then potentially the federal uh, uh, level could be uh, considered having jurisdiction 
even though the, uh, the, the most of the part of the business is focused on one state. So, uh, yeah, so even if you're only operating in one state, if the cumulative effect of engaging in that particular trade has a, has a potential effect on intercommerce trade, then you would, want, you would run afoul at the federal level and potentially fall within the framework of federal money transmitter laws. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, I think what the gentleman was referring to is is that case was pro was um, mainly prosecuted by f the SEC instead of FinCEN mm -hmm. as an unregistered security as opposed to uh, unlicensed money service business. Right. So so he, it, there's two regulatory authorities. Mm -hmm. and back in the day, I think he said it was a 2010, 2011 case. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of clarity in terms of whether Bitcoin was a security right. or not, and also based on how the individual is running the scheme, mm -hmm. it may have appeared as a security. Right, right. Uh, so it basically, is Bitcoin a security? Right. Or is any token uh, a, a security? And the SEC, SEC has recently uh, published some guidance on that. And in order for a specific token or cryptocurrency to be considered uh, a, a security, there's a test that needs to be met. You know, is there uh, money that is invested in, in a specific enterprise? Uh, is there a obligation placed on a third party to perform some type of function in the furtherance of that enterprise? Uh, and I'm assuming that in that particular case, there was a promise made that in his Ponzi scheme that I will do X, Y, and Z if you give me this much amount of, of Bitcoin. Now, in that context, it would meet a definition of a security. Uh, but if you're operating a decentralized cryptocurrency, there's no one particular developer that is promising you the, the moon and the stars, and, and, and it's not operating as a startup company. Now, there's some ICOs that would fit uh, within definition of, uh, of a security, and you, you've seen many exchanges have started to, to delist de some of these projects because they fall within the definition of, of a security. So it, just do, so it really depends on uh, the aim of the project and whether money or value is exchanged uh, for a promise in furtherance of a specific enterprise. So does that uh, answer your question? Okay, thank you. Okay, last question here yes. for, De for Daniel. Hi, thanks for the talk. So I think the clear leader in, as far as progressive law in, as on the state level mm -hmm. is Wyoming, right? With Caitlin Long um, and her coalition putting over a dozen pro-blockchain bills out in the Wyoming legislature and getting them passed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's always been this, uh, this uh, spectrum of, of regulation in which, on the one hand, regulators tend to want to stamp out something that they don't necessarily understand that well. Right. But on the other hand, they don't want the next Google to go to the other guy's uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, being uh, Texas-based, you, are you getting any sense of whether the, um, the innovations in Wyoming are, are you know, maybe going to spread? Like, like the Colorado legislature has mm -hmm. taken some of the Wyoming and, and kind of copied it. So. Well, I, I hope so that, you know, I, I think you can start dividing different states as pro-cryptocurrency uh, uh, and other jurisdictions as anti-cryptocurrencies. Uh, uh, so right now, as things are at the moment, uh, I would say Texas is a pro-cryptocurrency uh, uh, jurisdiction, uh, given the uh, guidance given by the uh, banking department. So it's possible to, to, to operate exchanges in Texas. But now you have this potential bill that's trying to change that, that trend. And it's running you know, opposite of what the bureaucrats are basically trying to do uh, in Texas. So who would win out? It just, I would think it just would depend on lobbying efforts and how uh, successful they are in, in, in uh, promoting a certain point of view. Now in Wyoming, uh, you, know, you, you have strong advocates there, uh, pro, uh, you know, advocating to, to, have, to be a pro-cryptocurrency jurisdiction uh, in the interests for supporting innovation. Uh, so there could be some grassroots uh, initiatives in, in, in other states. Perhaps there could be some uh, more favorable laws that are proposed. Okay. 
All right, let's give it a hand, give a hand for AJ Santos, please. All right, thanks.